Sam, it's great to have you back. Congrats. I think a lot of your personal wealth is tied up in this uh, this fundraise. Why do you, how, to what do you to attribute you your ability? Um, how important do you see this level here, the, the 50% drawdown from the highs? Uh, Chris, great to have you back well, on. I'd say a few things about is it. it. Is a crypto winter? Here. Is a crypto winter actually coming here? Well, winter's here, but I'm not sure crypto, crypto winter's right uh, here. Cryptocurrency, a system that was first publicly seen on the 3rd of January in 2009, over 10 years ago. There are many cryptocurrencies each with their own advantages, some being faster with transactions, some having high value, or some just being funny. Hello everyone, my name is Quetzal and in this video I go over what crypto is and go a little deeper into its history and maybe uncover a few things that some of you didn't know. Interestingly, Bitcoin, or cryptocurrency, was not the first digital currency, but only the first to succeed to great length. The original crypto was a currency called e-gold, which was founded in 1996, all 13 years before Bitcoin became a thing. E-gold was very similar to Bitcoin, except unlike Bitcoin, its transactions were run, handled, and managed by a company, kind of like a bank. And it did not use cryptography, which is why it's not a cryptocurrency. This electronic currency was doing very well and seen a lot of success. It seemed like it could not go wrong until the worst thing did go wrong. They were hacked and lost all their money to the hackers. After this incident, of course, no one wanted to buy Eagle because they feared they would lose their money as well. So it crashed and has never since been heard of again. Now, Bitcoin was founded in 2009 by a person or a group that went under the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. No, this is not a person, this is just an alias used by the founder of Bitcoin, and since Bitcoin was made, no one knows for sure who Satoshi is. And the closest people have gotten to someone admitting to being Satoshi was when Craig Wright said it was him. People believed this at first, and he showed that he had access to some of the Bitcoin wallets that were publicly known to belong to Satoshi. Except, then Satoshi posted on the Bitcoin forums the following, Craig Wright is a liar and a fraud, he is not Satoshi Nakamoto. This quickly disproved him being a suspect, but it is still possible that he was working on Bitcoin with Satoshi if he had the wallets. Hal Finney was born in California on the 4th of May 1956. He grew up there and graduated from Caltech, after which he went on to get a job at a game development company, which made games, some of which you might know, like Adventures of Tron. He is suspected to be Satoshi because of his enthusiasm for cryptography, and in 2004, people found a working proof of concept for Bitcoin, or just a system similar to Bitcoin. The investigation into Dorian Nakamoto caused a lot of excitement in the crypto or general tech community since it was the first ever attempt at finding Satoshi's identity. When inquired about the situation in 2014, he simply replied, I am no longer involved in that project and cannot discuss it. It has been turned over to other people, which implies that he has worked on it and possibly did in fact create Bitcoin or at least worked within a group who helped him make it. However, most say Satoshi would not simply use his second name, along with his surname, unless the intention was to be discovered, which, if Dorian denied, it means that that was not the intent. There are a few others, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. Those are just two of the biggest ones. Crypto is a topic we have all almost definitely heard, but how many of you actually know how it works? Well, there are a few different topics, the first of which, and possibly the most well-known one, is the financial part. Bitcoin has shares, similar to any other company, except it isn't a company, it's a currency, similar to the dollar, and just like the dollar, it can grow or fall in value, and just like a currency, it is dependent on something. In the case of a currency, the economy is what decides the value. 
In the case of a cryptocurrency, the number and value of the shares decides the value of the cryptocurrency. The second and final part of crypto that makes it special is how it works. It works through the blockchain, but we all knew that. But what we didn't know is exactly what the blockchain really is and how it works. The blockchain is a system where the transactions or trades are all registered on different computers and they're all stored on ledgers on those computers. And if the majority of the ledgers say the transaction was valid, it will go through, even if one of the ledgers says it was fraudulent. This is crypto mining. Your computer is used as the ledger when you mine crypto, and in return you get a small amount of money back. This is exactly why it's so hard to hack Bitcoin, because in order to hack it, you would have to hack possibly millions of computers, all of which, which have completely different security protocols. There are many different cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, or Dogecoin, each of which has its own advantages and disadvantages. In a sense, it is kind of like a different programming languages, if that is a better comparison for you. For example, Bitcoin has extremely high market value and can be invested in with security that it won't crash or you won't lose all your money. Or Ethereum, which is more secure than most other cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin first took off because it was advertised as being anonymous, which, to an extent, it was. Bitcoin and most other cryptocurrencies are advertised and known as mostly completely anonymous. But Bitcoin, the first ever cryptocurrency, was actually not nearly as anonymous as everyone thought. Yes, it had a level of anonymity, being that when you make a transaction, your name is not labelled alongside with the transaction, but your wallet ID is. This would mean that if anyone tried to do something illegal, like money laundering or buying and selling, substances, this could be tracked. But who tracked it? Only the creators of Bitcoin, right? Well, yes, also the people who made the system that handles the transactions as well. But who is this? It's, well, it's our good old friend, the government. This means that as much as it, this is anonymous, it is still not possible to money launder with it or do any other illegal activities. Well, that brings us to today, with something new, something that most think is completely stupid, but possibly there's a bit of worth to NFTs. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying NFTs are a good idea or have some value to them, and most people think that NFTs or non-fungible tokens are just stupid JPEGs with prices that are extremely high and they can screenshot it, voila. But when you buy an NFT, you're not buying the picture, you're buying the rights to said picture. You are then allowed to download, sell, or use the JPEG on anything, like selling merchandise with the NFT printed on it, which, since you bought the NFT, you are now allowed to do this, legally of course. Nothing besides law stops you from uploading the NFT to selling a Redbubble or Teespring, and just selling a t-shirt with and maybe making a little bit of money. The big problem with NFTs is that why would anyone want to buy a crappy JPEG for thousands or even millions of dollars? Also, Editor Quetzal here. Holy shit, my voice is dying. One, two, three, and four. Can't what you have now. Don't count what you do.